Okay, it looks like to me it, we should be starting. So good luck. Thank you. So I hope all of you know by now that Qt6 is a thing. It was released in the end of 2020. So that year did bring some positive things, at least for us. And if you follow the history of KDE, you know that a new major Qt version has always meant a new major iteration of the libraries and software that underpins all of KDE software. And this time is not expected to be any different. This is both a very challenging and an exciting time. It's challenging because there will be some porting pains, there will be some effort, there will be some kind of breakage, but it's also an opportunity to do things better and do this kind of change that we usually can't do because of some kind of compatibility promise. So in this talk, I don't actually want to talk about Qt6 very much. Instead of I want that, I want to focus on what's coming on the frameworks and library side on our stuff. And in particular, I want to talk about what has happened so far in terms of effort towards a KDE framework 6. I want to talk about all the things that are we are planning to do or we are expecting to be done. And I want to focus on some of the underlying goals and design decisions that were made. So my primary goal is that you as an application developer are not caught by surprise when some changes are made. And I want you all to be aware of, or roughly aware of what's coming so that you're aware of and can help us actually do it. So the, the whole effort towards KDE Framework 6 started even way before Qt6 was officially a thing. The first time we really talked about it was at Academy 2019 in Milan, back then where we like still physically met in a room for Academy. Sounds weird right now. And there we had a Framework 6 both. It was on a Monday morning, I think 9 a.m. after the social event in the evening. So if KF6 turns out to be a mess, that's why. And at that meeting, we collected some rough design ideas and goals and things that we want to get done for Framework 6. But the most important takeaway message from that was, we need a sprint to talk all about, about that. And a sprint we had. In November 2019, uh, some of us met in Berlin for a weekend long sprint about all things KF6. Now, if you take a closer look at this picture, you will find one person missing that you would very much expect to be at a framework sprint, and that's David Four. But for some reason, he wasn't able to come to Berlin at that time. So he made a virtual appearance here depicted inside this laptop. We all find, found that quite peculiar at the time. Little did we know that just a few months later, we would all attend sprints that way. So I guess that's just another example of KDE being ahead of the time. At this sprint, we talked about design goals and design ideas and principles that we want to apply for this transition. And I'm going to highlight the most important ones. First of all, Qt itself promises that the migration from Qt 5 to Qt 6 will be a rather smooth one. Not without, completely without of pain, but manageable. And we want to achieve the same. We don't want disruption, we want evolution instead of revolution. And we we agreed on a general procedure for making breaking API changes. So if you want to change an API in a breaking way, you should try to introduce the replacement API right now during the lifetime of KF5. 
Then we start porting all the users of that old API we want to remove to the replacement. And only once all of the significant users are ported, or at least a, an effort has been made to prove that porting is feasible and that we don't miss any important use case, then we deprecate the old API. And when we are branching for KDE Framework 6, then all things that are marked as deprecated are removed. So uh, we do that because we want to avoid that we as frameworks developers in our ivory tower make some arbitrary decision like, oh, we don't like that API, that's weird, just deprecate it and get rid of it. But two years from now, some application developer wants to port their application to framework six and they realize, oh, this thing is gone and there's no proper replacement for my use case. So to avoid that, we agreed on this basic principle. That means for you as an application developer, if your project gives you a deprecation warning for something cute or okay, KF5 during the build, then go fix it. Because once you're starting to port to Qt6 and KF6, this API will be gone. This is your warning. And we try to keep the amount of breakage that cannot be ported ahead of time and can only be addressed while actually porting from five to six as minimal as possible. But of course, there might be some cases where this is not possible. So we probably can't completely avoid it, but we want to very much keep it minimal. Then of course, we want our APIs to be better. But what does better mean in this context? Sometimes we have API in our frameworks where Qt or the C++ standard library actually has a better replacement. And we want to make use of that where it makes sense and try to remove our own API where it makes sense. Because often the upstream API is uh, equally as good or even better and we want to, of course, use the better thing, and we want to get rid of duplicated things where possible. Because we also try to avoid duplication in our own APIs, because duplication makes it harder to maintain, it makes it harder to document, it makes it harder to test, it's confusing, you don't know which one to use in which case, and we Wherever it, is, it makes sense, we try to converge to a single unified API for things instead of duplicated things. Um, currently, Frameworks is built on top of C++11, but C++11, C++ has evolved quite a bit since then. Qt6 itself will require C++17, so at least at that point, we need that for our apps as well. But a lot of KDE software actually makes use of C++17 now. And just today, we ported frameworks itself to build with C++17. So C++17 brings, amongst other things, some nice vocabulary types, like, for example, std optional, that help to make better APIs by making them more descriptive, more semantic, and generally easier to understand and use. And we want to make use of that because we want nice APIs. Then the transition is, of course, also the time to address all of those to-do KF6 comments that are littered across the code base to fix up all those little API things that we can't fix right now because of strong API stability guarantees. And that's just something that someone dedicated needs to do. And we also want to remove some of the stuff that is not used at all or very rarely used because unused code is untested code and that means it's broken code and it just increases the overall maintenance burden so we want to remove stuff where it makes sense. 
Then what we also want as a design goal is a better separation between parts that are queued widget specific, between parts that are queued quick specific and stuff that is shared between the two of them. Because right now a lot of our APIs use types from queued widgets without actually really needing to. And by doing that, we want to improve the QML compatibility of our frameworks because currently we have some functionality, for example, spell checking via Sonnet that works great for Qt widgets applications, but not for Qt quick applications. And since the trend goes very much towards writing new software in Qt quick, we of course want our nice frameworks to work there as well. A common example of this is using a Qt widget pointer to represent a window that works but it's tied to Qt widgets. We actually have a common base class that is in Qt GUI and thus works with Qt widgets and Qt quick, and that is Qt window. And by porting stuff from taking a Qt widget pointer to using a Qt window pointer, we improve things. Then what we also want to avoid is having a Qt quick application and then somewhere, for example, in a file operation, an error occurs and KIO pops up a widget-based dialog to inform the user that something has gone wrong. That does not look particularly nice, especially it looks really alien on Android. So in order to improve that, we want to achieve a, a better logic and UI separation, so we can plug different UI implementations on top of the same logic. And a very good reason to avoid a Qt widgets dependency in your Qt quick application is that it saves you binary size. The Qt widget library is something like five megabytes in size, and if your Android APK is five megabytes smaller, that's pretty nice. What we also want to do is reduce the dependencies between our frameworks. What you see on the screen is the dependency graph of KIO. And the fact that you probably can't really read this graph kind of proves what, what I'm talking about. We hope that by reducing the dependencies between the frameworks, we make things a bit easier to deploy because not all dependencies are easily deployable on all platforms. And automating a lot of dependencies that depend on each other is not that easy as it is with just a handful of dependencies with no dependencies themselves. It saves installation size, which is kind of not that much of an issue on the Linux desktop it can become an issue in embedded deployment. And by reducing the dependency tree, we hope that we make frameworks more attractive for outside users, because right now what we often hear is, oh, I don't, I don't want this because it drags half of KDE with it, which is of course bullshit, but it's, it's an impression that sticks around. Then we want a better separation between interfaces and implementations, because some frameworks mix the two of them. For example, we have password storage via KWallet. KWallet is both an implementation of a password storage system and an API for applications to use it. But on GNOME, for example, we, GNOME has its own GNOME keyrings thing we could use KWallet there, it, it works because it's just Linux, but it would be much nicer if, for example, Dolphin was running in GNOME, all the passwords would be stored in GNOME Keyring. On Windows on, and macOS and Android, KWallet does not really work at all. And all of those platforms have some form of native password storage system, which we want to use there. And it would be nice if we had a single API that applications can use that would then transparently use whatever platform backend is suited best. A similar story is sharing things via Purpose. Purpose provides an implementation of 
share this file or share this URL with, for example, Nextcloud or KD Connect or some other application. And on Linux, that works nice. On Android, we have the, the Android system has its own sharing implementation provided by the system, which we want to use when running on Android. And here again, it would be much nicer if we had a, an, API, an interface API that allows to use any of these implementations without actually worrying about it. And also same story with file indexing, which on Plasma is done by Baloo. On GNOME, it's done via GNOME Tracker. Other platforms probably have their own implementations on it, of it. And we, we, again, want a simple interface to use all of them without needing to worry about them. Somewhat tying into this, we want better cross-platform support for our frameworks. Because Qt is cross-platform itself. KDE software originally was very Linux specific, but we got a lot better in that regard and lots of our applications do work on other platforms and that's something we want to encourage developers to do. But some of our frameworks could help more with that. First of all, we, we want this kind of interface and implementation separation that I talked about earlier before. Sometimes we have this separation, but an implementation for a specific platform is missing. For example, key notifications does a pretty great job at that because it supports Linux, it supports Android, it supports Windows, it supports macOS, but for example, it does not support iOS. So adding an iOS backend would make key notifications a very attractive thing to use for Qt application developers. Then, as I mentioned, some dependencies are hard or impossible to deploy on some platforms. A common example is Dbus, which we use for a lot of things on Linux, but on Windows and Mac, it only kind of works and usually doesn't make sense. On Android, it just doesn't work at all. But some of our frameworks use Dbus in, in their APIs or have it as a dependency. So we, we want to try to avoid as much as possible to pull in it as a dependency on Windows or Android and Mac OS. That makes it easier to deploy and uh, avoid some, some failure cases. Similar story with X11 and Wayland, which we use directly in some of our frameworks like a Windows system. And what we also try to do is identify recurring problems that we have not yet solved in Qt or in KF5 and add new APIs to solve those problems. But one thing that comes to my mind is that in a couple of applications, we have implementations for inhibiting screen locking and screen timeout for various, various different platforms. And it would be very nice to have a single framework to do that. So we have a nice cross-platform API. That's not really related to KF6, though. We can add that API anytime we, li we like. Then it's also time to retire some of the frameworks that have served us well in the past, but are not really relevant anymore. Either because they model deprecated concepts, build on deprecated APIs, or are just not generally useful anymore. First thing that comes to mind is KDE Libs4 support, which was only ever meant to be a porting aid from Qt4 to Qt5, but it's about time we get done with that. So there's no need for KDE Libs4 support anymore. Then KHTML has served us amazingly well in the past, so amazingly that other pe people picked it up and turned it into something else, which ironically we tend to use right now, which is Qt Web Engine. A similar story with KDE WebKit and KJS and KJS Embed. So they are generally not used anymore. We even ported Conqueror away from KHTML, so it's time to retire those. Similar story with Cross. Uh, there's a better replacement 
for scripting, which is QJS engine and cross is not really used by much anymore. So it's probably time to retire that as well. Okay, media player and KXML RPC client were only ever used by two applications uh, for each. And those are obsolete as well. So since nothing actively maintained uses them and nobody maintains them, we just should sunset them. And then there's KDE init, which is an attempt to speed up application launch times by doing some clever things. Unfortunately, it turned out that in a lot of cases, we don't actually make use of them. So we did some investigations and some profiling, and it turns out these days it's not really useful at all and doesn't really provide an improvement. So it should go as well. Then once we had established these design principles, we split up in some smaller groups and made a list of all the frameworks and distributed them across the groups. And then each group looked at some of the frameworks and evaluated how well they fit the goal. And we, we made some notes on them, some action items, which we then discussed in a larger group. And what we ended up with is a nice big fabricator work board. You can find it uh, on that link or just search for KF6. It currently contains 384 tasks, some of them done, some of them not. Some of them are more like meta tasks or design goals. Some of them are very actionable. Some of them need to wait before through the KF6 branching. A lot of them can be done now. So I would like to encourage everyone here to go have a look at that work board and pick up some tasks and help us get them done because the work we're doing right now will shape the future of our software for the foreseeable future. So that work is hugely important. We also agreed back then on the first sprint that we would like to have a follow-up sprint, something like six months later. Uh, for obvious reasons that did not happen. And it was not until earlier this year that we managed to have a follow-up sprint, completely virtual, of course. But that does not mean that nothing has happened in between. Because a lot of people uh, did what I just uh, encouraged you to. They went to the work board, picked up some tasks, got them done, discussed more, refined tasks, split them out, added new ideas. And it was, it was pretty productive. And at the second sprint, we got together to discuss some of the open questions, some of the things that needed input from more people, and just refine some of the task to, to be more precise and more actionable. And we also agreed that we would like to have some kind of regular meeting to talk about frameworks things. So currently every Saturday at 1 p.m. UTC, we meet on Big Blue Button to go over some of the open tasks for an hour and discuss some things where people got stuck and need help or input or discuss questions around that. So if you're interested in Framework 6, then come join us on a Saturday. So now I want to present some of the highlights of the technical aspects that we agreed on or already did. This is by no means an exhaustive list of things. I just picked some of the things that I consider the most important or most impactful. First of all, there is the K service type trader class, which manages services. A service can be a couple of different things. It can be an application. It can be a plugin. It can be a K part, which is mostly just a special case of a plugin. It can be a kconfig module, which again is mostly a special case of a plugin. It can be pretty much anything that is described by a desktop file. 
and Key Service Type Trader manages a global database of all the available services, and you can use it to query that database. It's done via some uh, specialized trader language, and you can write queries like, give me all of the applications that are installed. Give me the preferred image viewer. Give me all of the applications that can handle PNG files. Give me the K part preferred to open PDF files. Give me all the plugins for KD Connect. But as it turns out, using that trader language is not very intuitive and people would rather much write C++ code than some domain-specific language because it's much, much easier to approach and understand. And mixing things together that are not really the same, like applications and plugins, doesn't really make sense. Since a couple of years, we actually have a new way of querying and loading plugins, which is the K-Plugin Loader and K-Plugin Metadata API and K-Core add-ons. And over the years, uh, a lot of the plugin stuff was ported to use that. And so we agreed that we want to use uh, port all of the plugin loading we have in our application to this new approach. Then we also got around to have a better replacement for querying applications, which is K-Application Trader, which is pretty much for, like K-Service Type Trader except only for applications and instead of a domain specific language we use a c++ function to do arbitrary filtering and you can use that to answer questions like what's the preferred image viewer or give me all the applications that can open pdf files and for k parts we came up with a new k part loader which is very similar to the application trader just for k-parts. So you can tell it, give me an instance of a k-part that can handle PDF files. And overall, pretty much all of the use cases for k-service tab trader had better replacements, so it's natural to just remove the whole thing. Another framework that is expected to have larger changes is k-icon themes. In particular, we want to remove the k-icon loader usage because there is a better upstream API in Qt, which is q-icon from theme. And what k-icon loader and q-icon from theme do is you give it an icon name and what you get in return is a q-icon or a pix map that corresponds to the icon you requested. And unfortunately, k-icon loader has some troubles or is not that intuitive to use for high DPI scenarios. So just by porting from the KDE API to the Qt API, we fixed the bug of high DPI rendering issues, which of course is nice. Then I've talked about KWallet and the interface implementation problem. And as it turns out, there's already a third party Qt library that does exactly what we need. And that is Qt Keychain. So what we are planning to do is to acquire Qt Keychain as a KDE framework and port all of our software to use that one as an interface to KWallet, which then becomes an implementation detail, and as an interface to all of the other backends I just talked about. Last year at Academy, uh, David Four had a talk about uh, old and new jobs in KIO, where he talked about reworking krun into a couple of new jobs, which are application launcher job, URL launcher job, and a command launcher job. And those achieve this separation between Q widgets part and non-Q widgets part, and this uh, separation between logic and UI representation much better than the old krun did. So what you can do right now is plug different UI delegates in the same job so you can have a delegate that pops up a queue dialog. We created a new one that pops up a notification, which for Plasma use cases is much nicer. And you could write your own thing that integrates into your Qt Quick application. And 
while I was researching this talk, I came across an academy talk from, from 2019 from David Four about the new KDE Frameworks 5. And there he mentioned to remove KTool invocation. This time we, we really mean it. What KTool invocation does right now is sort of twofold. One use case for it is launching things via KDE init. But as I've mentioned earlier, we actually want to remove KDE in it. So that API is not really useful anymore. And we should use one of those uh, launcher jobs that I've talked about earlier. The other use case is stuff like launching a mail client, launching the help center. And to do that, we are probably going to add some new API um, on top of the aforementioned launcher jobs. So they have a domain specific interface and then use the common mechanism to actually launch the job. And in order to improve the QML support of the frameworks, we want to break up the existing K-declarative framework because its purpose is, again, a bit twofold. It contains, first of all, some generally useful uh, Qt Quick and QML related classes, like for example, all the QML KCMs have a common base class there. And it also contains a couple of QML bindings for other frameworks. And it turns out that due to all of this, uh, the thing depends on KIO, which has this horrible dependency tree that you have seen earlier. And that makes carry declarative very not nice to use and people are scared to use it because all of the dependencies it drags in. So we hope that by moving all of these frameworks bindings into the respective frameworks, instead of having them all in a single framework, and by reworking some of the internals to remove, uh, to reduce that dependency tree a lot and make it more attractive to use and thus improve the QML support of the overall frameworks product. Again, this was by no means an exhaustive list. There's still a lot of, going, of it going on. Have a look at our work board. Uh, join us on, for example, KDE Devil to talk about anything you want to talk about. And I'm not the end. Do you have any questions for me? Thank you very much, Nicolas, for that. I do see some questions already. Uh, I can read them for you if you'd like. Please so, do. How is KDE handling issues with lack of Qt multimedia until release of Qt 6.2? How will media playback be handled with planned deprecation of K media player? So the lack of Qt multimedia until Qt 6.2 is very easily avoided by just not porting anything to Qt 6 until then. Because right now, uh, the current plan is for Qt multimedia to be released in a couple of months. And we still have a lot of work to do before we get to the point where we would actually need Qt multimedia. So there's still plenty of things to do before that. And K-Media Player is not actually used by anything except one application. And that one is pretty dead. So there's no issue there. OK, good to know. Uh, then someone was confused when you were talking about um, removing some functions uh, with Framework 6 API. Does it mean they will be? Uh, deprecated but kept around until framework 7 or how, how does that work? Now when I say deprecate things I mean in KF5 they will give you a deprecation warning and then when we actually get around to making a branch for framework 6 then we delete all the things so everything that's deprecated now will be gone in framework 6. Okay uh, then, on making things modular, 
Is it planned to use optional dynamic library loading with graceful feature degradation if certain libraries, example, KF Crash, are not installed on the system? We sort of do that already, and we, in some places, we plan to make use of it more. So we, um, one example is k-standard shortcuts, which currently lives in k-config widgets, which has a rather not nice dependency tree because it depends on a couple of things. And it's, it's actually one of the, the worst offenders in the overall dependency tree. And k-standard shortcuts mm, uses k-config to r read some, like, read your settings from the disk so you can, figure, you can configure your shortcuts. And what we plan to do is we take that thing and move it down to k-GUI add-ons, which cannot depend on k-config. But we actually are planning to add a plugin mechanism. So when you run a Plasma, Plasma will provide a plugin that then feeds the configuration information into the library and on non-Plasma platforms, this kind of config configurability does not really exist. So for example, on Windows, there's no point in trying to read the Plasma settings. So there it's not an issue, or we could write a Windows-specific plugin that reads some Windows settings or just hard code something. So that's, that's a pretty neat trick that we try to apply in some places that can, can help. Okay, thank you very much. And uh, still one question here that I see remaining. Will there be some better documentation for things like Plasma applets, desktop widgets, etc., in Framework 6? That's pretty much unrelated to Framework 6 because nothing is stopping us from writing better documentation now. We don't need to break API to do that. One nice side effect of Framework 6 is that we are reworking some things, removing some things, and making some things a bit easier to use without documentation, or when replacing things, we try very much to add documentation. So the overall transition sort of helps in that direction, but in general, it's the, the question of better documentation is pretty unrelated. Okay. Especially when it comes to Plasma things that are even more unrelated to frameworks. Okay, so basically you can do better documentation right now and that's yes. stopping us. So And uh, I'm I'm glad that uh, KDE is pushing for better documentation by having hired two people to work on that because it's certainly an important thing. Yeah, I agree. Okay, I don't see any other questions. Uh, Nicolas, thank you again very much. Are there any other tags or buffs that you will be uh, handling? Um, I think there will be a KF6 buff. I don't know when it will be, but I trust you to find it on the wiki. Yeah, people can surely find it in the schedule. Okay, thank you, Nicolas.